I'm a student of philosophy. A person who has too many questions with not enough answers. As such, I have a question for you. Where are you? Take it literally or dive deeper. Are you where you want to be? Now ask yourself another question. Why are you there? Each one of us has limits that prevent us from reaching our true potential. But these boundaries are able to be broken through a proper shift in mentality and a purification of our environment. However, the real question is, what are you willing to sacrifice? And what changes are you willing to make in order to reach your desired destination? My harsh path began in middle school. It made great when I made a substantial mistake. I tried to fit in with the wrong group of people. In a brief period of time, my surroundings changed remarkably, disrupting my focus and changing my mindset. If I'm honest, I was bothered by how they were constantly classifying people according to our social status. And although I was different and eternally judged them, in a matter of months, I became a reflection of them. Because in fact, your environment and your circle of friends shape who you are. My first no-level transformation was in academics. At this point, I didn't care at all about school. I recall turning in projects two weeks late if I even bothered to turn them in at all. I never studied for tests, and every day when coming home from school, I wouldn't take my backpack out of the car. I lived by not a single drop of ambition that inspired me to get out of bed every morning. My second transformation was in athletics. My body evolved unhealthy, gaining so much weight because I was sedentary. I was 5 feet 10 and really overweight. So people began to call me names like Fat Mammoth or Fat Giraffe. <laughs> How does that even work? I started to compare my physical appearance to other girls. And yes, they were different. Few were 6 feet tall in Nicaragua, where according to Nation Master, the average is barely 5 foot 2. But, different doesn't mean better. Different just means different. But I didn't know this, and I became so self-conscious that I would skip my physical education class for months to avoid running in shorts. And it was at this time that the guy I liked texted my friend, describing me as obese and ugly, even saying that my legs were disgusting. Socially, I drowned in an ocean full of insecurities, and I adapted what I call the mentality of average. Now that I'm not in this facet of my life anymore, I always wonder, why did I care so much? Why did I used to crave this validation? The answer, I was in an awful environment. Trying to find me somewhere else, I lost the real me to other people, because I feared rejection. And to make a long story short, I hated myself and I have fallen into the sharp claws of depression. Unlike some, I was loved. The people I proudly call friends today helped me heal my drawn spirit by believing in me when I didn't believe in myself. They forced me to rise up when I hit rock bottom. And right now, I want to challenge you to believe in someone else and to inspire a person to explore their potential and wake up to life like I did. When I realized the universal truth, you are what you want to be, I flipped my whole life around, and I reinvented myself. But there was something missing in this phrase nobody told me. You are not what you want to be, but you are what you do to get to where you are. This realization was the beginning of my shift, from one side of the spectrum to the other. But before I reveal my before and after, let me tell you the three-step process. Theodore Roosevelt once said, believe you can and you're halfway there. And this takes us to the first step to accomplish what you aspire, applying the power of belief. This means that you set a target that others will classify as unrealistic because you know that your beliefs create your reality. It is not the lack of skills or intelligence that stops you, rather the lack of trust on yourself. That is how a champion's mind works. But what are the characteristics of the mind of the champion? A believer has an inner monologue every day 
to reinforce the notion that one is capable of anything. A dreamer. Grasp the idea that the future is a collection of presents and understands that the present is all there is. A visionary. Visualizes every day the moment where they shake hands with their dreams. A type feeling it so strongly that they can distinguish their vision from the reality. And an optimist knows that passion keeps humans alive by delivering a sense of purpose. They don't sabotage their mind before even trying. Now, let's put all this together and ask yourself, do I have the mind of a champion? But what is the psychological standpoint regarding this philosophy? The psychologist Hill Dweck coined the terms fixed and growth mindset. A person with a fixed mindset believes that their intelligence and capacities are fixed traits. Therefore, they cannot be expanded not even with effort, because they have an external locus of control. On the other hand, the human with a growth mindset knows that their intelligence and abilities can be improved with effort and dedication. They have an internal locus of control. For instance, let's imagine two high school students. They both took the SATs and scored poorly. The thoughts of the first students are, I'm a failure, and I'll never be good enough. And the second student thinks, this is not what I wanted, but it must have been my strategy. And this doesn't measure my intelligence because it's a standardized test. Do you see the difference? The first one is a pessimist, and the second is an optimist. Indeed, you are the master of your seat. So liberate your mind from this vicious monster now. Your brain is incredibly malleable. This is backed up by recent discoveries in neuroscience, brain plasticity, is a fascinating phenomenon of the brain's ability to mold its own structure according to external environments and repetitive practices. Neurons literally change with experience because her brain is adaptable. For this reason, I stated earlier, your environment shapes who you are. This proves how our neural networks can expand by making good choices and nurturing our seeds of thought and curiosity. Basically, plant a strong sense of belief in the right mindset and harvest your new reality, which is now. And mark these words. If my mind can conceive it, and my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it. From the great Muhammad Ali. Because every innovation begins in your mind. It is the fruit of an idea. In talking about environments, let's move further to the second step to building up the mind of a champion. The power of social environments. The people you surround yourself with will leave a bold print on your identity. This is why you have to choose your squad wisely. Abusive and dysfunctional friends act like a circular blockade that prevents you from reflecting your ideas to the world. They are creativity killers, and somehow they manipulate us and make us believe that their opinions actually matter. When they don't, why do we listen to them? Because they shout out pessimism every time we let our music out. And then, we cannot hear our own voice. The impact that our social world has on us shows that emotions are contagious. I surrounded myself with ambitious individuals after almost failing all my classes, and the simple contact with them made me ambitious. If you're in touch with friends that are insightful and always questioning the pure nature of existence, you will also begin to question. I know that because I am that philosophical friend. Now my friends are also beginning to question. James H. Fowler, a social scientist from Harvard College, performed a study concerning the spread of happiness in a community for 20 years. He found out that humans were in a place where happiness was a predominant emotion, were more likely to become infected with this feeling. Even the physical distance made a difference. The statistics showed that those who had a happy person within a mile were 25% more likely to become joyful too. And those with a positive next door neighbor had a 34% probability. The less distance, the higher the chances of sharing this contagious emotion. So now, ask yourself, what kind of feelings are your friends transmitting to you? Additionally, the link between our friends and ourselves strengthens when it comes to exploiting our talents. It is easier to believe in our potential when we have other people around us who encourage us to keep fighting. In fact, healthy friendships benefit us in three key ways. Boosting our self-confidence, developing interpersonal skills, and broadening our horizons. Firstly, these great individuals build up our self-esteem because they enrich our lives with positivity. 
and increase the sense of belonging, something we all crave. Imagine having a major trouble that brings you waves of anxiety. How would you feel if you had no one to talk to? A friend has the power to revive your energies by creating a human shelter where you support each other mutually when saying, I believe in you. Secondly, this relationship develop our interpersonal intelligence. In other words, effective interaction with other people. Being able to communicate effectively can have long-term benefits, since this skill plays a vital role in your professional career progress. It opens a window for opportunities where you can trade ideas and close deals. And most importantly, it is the ability of successful communication that creates every leader. And lastly, these powerful bonds broaden our mindset. When sharing with a friend, you exchange perspectives, gaining empathy. You may have a really practical friend, an overachiever, or a mystical one. And each one will teach you something that will serve you at some point in your life. And when you all unite, you merge these diverse ideas in a melting pot, feeding a wiser mind. So when you possess the right mindset and belong to the right social environment, burning instincts will emerge in you and you take actions that will drive you to your wished destinations. The first two steps in a way set the fertile soil and the season for your seeds to flourish. This leaves us in the last step of the process, the power of instinct versus intuition. These are the following definitions of the terms according to the Cambridge Dictionary. John Lopez Arnold, an award-winning entrepreneur, classifies intuition and instinct into categories of intelligence. At the bottom, he places her instincts as the lowest form of intelligence because they are focused on survival and sex. At the top, he places intuition, which is more about our feelings and creativity. We need to master the art of balance between both of these because we can't fully trust our instincts like animals and we can't always place logic aside. But it's essential that your intuition is always activated because the answer to most of your questions are inside of you. Dr. Judy Forlev, an assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at UCLA, claims that her patients see it as a superpower for proper leadership. When something is off with a person on the face, your intuition wakes up all the nerve cells in your body to warn you. It's like having knowledge, but before knowing. To harness this power, it is essential that your intuition is always activated. And always ask yourself, is when I'm feeling irrational fear or intuition? and evaluate the characteristics of your emotion. According to Orlov, if it's intuition, this sentiment should be focusing on your present. It is neutral in emotion and it feels expansive. Meanwhile, fear focuses on your past wounds. It is too emotional and it feels restricted. In essence, allow yourself to be guided by a real professor, intuition, but don't let doubt interfere with it. Remember, Franklin Roosevelt said, the only thing you should fear is fear itself. Do you see how the steps of this process are all interconnected? You can't have a growth mindset without a supportive environment, and you can't have wonderful relationships, relationships without listening to your intuition about people. Your intuition will guide you to find the friends you need to reinforce the right mindset that will lead you to your targets. Combine the three powers, a growth mindset, a positive environment, in an active intuition and reboot yourself. Become the power, the most dynamic version of you. And now, going back to myself, this is how the process transformed me. In academics, remember the girl who was failing all her classes? Now, she's the same one that strives for a perfect GPA, wants to apply to a top colleges, and that receives recognition for her grades and dedication. In athletics, the girl who skipped a semester of PE class and that was called the Fat Giraffe became the track and field captain, a national title holder, and a Central American medalist. And socially, the girl who craved others' validation for the first time stopped caring. She stares at her reflection and finally sees herself, especially loving her height. And she didn't change. She became herself. But for me, this is just the start. Because I am still building my mind of the champion. And all these started not because I believed in myself, because I didn't. 
but because someone showed me how to think differently. And I'm grateful for you. You know who you are. So now, besides following all this process for you, I dare you to believe in someone else. Because believing in someone else is what truly makes you a believer. Thank you.